going on guys? Welcome to Garage 23 and part two of our 240SX 5 low conversion. We cut last week's video a little short because it was getting pretty late and the rear is a little more involved than the, the front, a lot more moving parts. So let's get started. All right, step one, jack up the car. Yeah, it's a lot of work and now I'm lazy. Uh, anyway, first thing we gotta do is take this cotter pin off and try to get the axle nut off because if this thing doesn't come off, then we're not doing anything today. <laughs> and these can be a real pain in the ass and considering this has been on here for 400 something thousand miles, it's not looking good. We've also got a little bit of an announcement today. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. Oh my God! We just crossed over 900 this morning so super exciting <laughs> we're actually going to be doing a giveaway when we reach a thousand so keep an eye out for that See if this dinky little lows impact and get this done. Yeah. It's my favorite tool ever. Just wanna add, I found this channel called the Torque Test Channel and they do like dyno tests on tools, which is like a thing I didn't know existed. But it was interesting because this thing's rated at 1,400 pound feet of nut busting torque <laughs> and it actually only dynos at 460 foot pounds made me realize how much Lowe's overstates the capacity of this thing and it also kind of explains why it can't take the lug nuts off the patrol sometimes but yeah good enough for this comment below your guys' favorite preferred power tool brand or what color team are you <laughs> okay now we gotta take the caliper off which is the 17 I believe, yeah, 17. Three hours later. I thought something felt weird. When I was trying to turn the rotor earlier, it felt like I had a little too much tension on it, which, as you can still see, it's not exactly easy. This really explains why the car's been so clunky when we got it. <clears throat> If this caliper is seized, the whole time we've been trying to like move around, it would make sense that it's clunking so much because it's fighting this caliper. So yeah, good thing we were doing this because I probably wouldn't have found this. <laughs> now to get it off. stuck too. All right, good start. I think we can actually go ahead and take the brake or the e-brake line off of this now. Yeah, so we're not going to be using these these e-brake cables. So I think we can just go ahead and disconnect it now which is just this little clip like most brick lines. And just unhook it. And that's it for that guy. Caliper we're just gonna leave in here for now and we'll deal with that brick line probably at the end. But now, let's see if we can get this axle to move. I guess just remove all the 
bolts for all the links, and then we can get the hub off from the back of the knuckle. I'm actually thinking of just taking off the knuckle and trying to sandblast it and paint it. That depends if we got some paint. All right, all these guys should be 19 mil nuts. It's always a pain in the ass when you can't get to the the nut with your main tool. You gotta come at it from the bolt side. Just complicates things a little bit more. looks really clean it's not even like rusty or anything this is the first like garage uh, like actual garage kept car that i've ever worked on <laughs> this is amazing i gotta say it. everybody put your car in the garage right now if you don't have a garage build a garage <laughs> somebody in your family if you pass down your car or whatever decades later will thank you whoever owned this car thank you <laughs> our old four lug hub. It still actually feels in great shape, like zero play in it at all. Jeez. Okay, now this part, we could just leave this on here and just put everything back together around this. But, let's see if I can just repeat. Okay, found a little bit of paint. Might have to go get some more, but whatever. We're already in here, let's just take it apart and make it look pretty. Also, I found my needle, needle nose. <laughs> I wasn't trying to smell it. I just, it just, you could smell it from here. Knuckle sniffer. It's really just an excuse to use the sandblaster. Uh, I think we want to tape this guy off because I like, I still got a nice zinc coating on it. Anybody need a BBS E50? I bought it to make a table out of, but eh. All right, I got most of the old crud off. Now we're ready for some paint. All right, we got this thing all cleaned up. We even threw a nice coat of paint on it. So it's extra fresh now. Yeah. Yeah. So now we can start putting stuff back together. All right, we even cleaned up our backing plate. Nice sandblasted with a new coat of paint and our hub. And then we cleaned up all the hardware. Looks extra nice. But before we can start putting all that stuff back together, we need to take the e-brake cables out because the factory calipers on 240s, if you guys saw before, they're attached to the brake caliper because the, the brake caliper has the parking brake integrated into it. Like that's how most cars were. The difference now is that we're gonna have a brake drum inside of our rotor and the end of the 
the e-brake cable is different, so you can't physically attach it if you don't have the right uh, cable. And here we have the stock one, which was off the 300ZX. I think it was a two plus two. Not entirely sure. <laughs> I have to check back on the footage, but I'm pretty sure it was a two plus two. So supposedly these e-brake cables work on an S14, but they're either too long or too short, but supposedly they can be made to work. I didn't really want to bother because I kind of messed them up a little bit when, when we took them out. I'm not sure how much that actually matters, but luckily GK Tech offers brand new e-brake cables for an R33, which also happen to fit an S14 and S15 and R34. It's crazy how all four of those cars are basically the same chassis or similar. But yeah, I just opted to get brand new cables because I didn't really want to bother with that. So let's open these up. I also want to see what exactly is the difference between the 300ZX cables and the Skyline ones. Yeah, shout out to GK Tech single-handedly keeping the S chassis game alive. So I think this is the driver's side. Oh, okay, so these would have been way too short, but GK Tech actually makes a bracket, I think. I'm pretty sure that lets you like use these cables, but I just opted for the right size cable to begin with. So we need to get the stock ones out because as you can see the main difference in the cables is that the factory ones have this kind of end on them and the ones we need this kind. So you can see it's pretty different. So not gonna work unless you have the right one. So now gotta crawl on my back under the car and get the stock cables out. Okay, so to get the e-brake cables off, there's two 10, mil 10, mil 10 milliliters? 10 millimeter bolts holding this end of the cable here, well, one for each cable, one on each side. And this is the more complicated one to get to because it's got the heat shield for the gas tank. So hopefully it's not too much of a pain in the ass. side off too. Luckily this side has a lot more room than, than that one. There's no heat shield or anything. It's just easier to get to. Okay now at the front of the cables we have a 12 millimeter nut holding the cables on. I already got the other one off. I had to get a swivel and a longer extension and get to that one. So that one's a little annoying. But this one's just a straight shot so no problem. And then we can take it off bracket here. And then we can just feed it through. So bad. <laughs> All right, now we gotta feed the new ones through here. So, through here. Hey, keep it down over there. Get the pee. Come on. Hey. Okay, I should 
be about right. Now to get it back on the bracket. If you want to make this easier, you could remove the exhaust and the drive shaft, but I can't be bothered. So we're just going to struggle this way. All right, now I just got to put the e-brake cable on these clips just so it doesn't you know, catch on the drive shaft. So that one. And then this one back here. And that should hold it in place. Now for the other one. Okay, so the little support brackets that come on the GK Tech lines, they don't fit the S14. Primarily because I'm assuming these are modeled after R33 e-brake cables. I mean, that's what they're labeled, so I'm guessing this fits in R33, but it doesn't really work for us. So what I'm gonna try to do is I had to pry the bracket off the S14 line, and I'm gonna try and put it on this line and hopefully that works. I'm not entirely sure if these are 100% necessary, but I would like to put them back if they were there originally. So if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll just leave them out, but I wanna give it a shot at least. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna work. Now I just need to find the 10 mil that I left somewhere. Definitely most annoying bolt so far. off. Just probably leave these off. <laughs> Alright, just about got this back in place. I just kind of had to crimp the bracket onto the cable after I bolted it on because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get it into place. Okay, we've got both of those little support brackets bolted back in and crimped around the cable. Gotta say that was definitely the biggest pain in the ass so far on this, this job, but my OCD wouldn't let me not do it, so here we are. Now we can get to the fun part. Just putting all the nice shiny stuff back on. So this one, I think we can put this on first. Let's put it back on the ball joint. And wherever the nut went, because everything's rolling around on the floor. Okay. So 22 mil, a couple of duggas. And then put the pin back through. And wheel bearing. Okay, so the wheel bearing has this big shiny pin thing, and that goes through the wheel bearing itself, and then that goes through your backing plate, and then the whole thing goes through the knuckle washer and 27 mil nut and four 19 mils Okay, that's more or less in place. Just want to hold in place so we can get the cable in here. 
is that's gonna be a little tricky. So that has a 12 mil nut that holds it from the backside, but you gotta thread it through the hole in the backing plate first. So like that, and then there's a stud that comes out of the backing plate and that'll hold it in place. Still can't really tell if those brackets were necessary, but whatever, they're there, it still fits. Now, 12 millimeter wrench. Okay, now, now you're gonna have to get like under here. Okay, now you got the cable through here. Then you need to pull the spring and the cable and put it around this little hook, channel, whatever you want to call that. And it'll like clip in place. Then you'll have the spring and the other end, which you need to go on the brake shoes. All right, so now you have this end left over and that's gonna go in this part of the brake shoe. So just pull the spring back and then thread the cable through this thing. There, it's like that. And then, <laughs> I purposely didn't take this apart just cause I didn't want to deal with all the pieces rolling around. So should be able to get it back on. Yeah. Good enough. So you have this piece that goes with the spring toward the front of the car. And it goes in the little slot on the brick shoe on this side, like that. And then the other side has a slot there. And then there's this little triangle bit and that I think goes that way. Then you have these little like screw arrow thingies with springs on them. These hold the brake shoes against the backing plate and you just need a flathead screwdriver. Okay, this one's gonna go through that hole in the brake shoe. Then you gotta kinda compress the spring, but also line up the arrow with the slot in the backing plate on the back side. Can you see that? Okay. There we go. That only took a couple tries. Now, same thing on the other side. Now we have these springs that go I think that's it. And then you stretch them and hook them onto that middle thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. hey. I don't know what the heck is on these. It's like, like caked on. It feels like Play-Doh almost. Like I, I, I hate that this stuff is like so dirty. I want to like sandblast it, polish it, and replate it myself, but I don't have any of this stuff to do that. And so I'm sitting here with a stupid steel wool trying to get all this crap off of here without hurting the plating, but that's taking the plating off and it's annoying me. <laughs> See, like, what is that? Like, it doesn't even look like grease. And it was like inside the wheel bearing, so. I assume it's grease, but I've never seen grease turn into like dough. My LCD is screaming right now. All right, you might've noticed that we didn't exactly refurbish everything on here, just like certain things. And that's mostly because we're gonna end up replacing most of this later. So I only took the time to clean up the parts that I knew we were gonna keep, which is the hub and backing plate and the knuckle. 
So I didn't really bother with any of the other stuff. And hopefully by the time we have to redo this, I can have other tools to help me refurbish or restore the stuff properly. Maybe then I could have all the tools that I need ready <laughs> instead of getting up 15 times. Okay, now we're ready for rotors and calipers. Okay, and the caliper. We didn't buy pads for these. Screw it, be right back. Okay, O'Reilly to the rescue. <laughs> I don't only go to O'Reilly's because I, I look Irish, but they usually have stuff in stock more than AutoZone, so. I hope these are the right ones. sandblast and paint this too but we're not keeping this so <laughs> and actually now it's probably a good time to button up the rest of this because can't really tighten those very well if all this is moving around so Trying to loosen the banjo bolt on the brake caliper and switch it to the new caliper without spilling too much stuff. Look 240. Yosh. Now for the wheel. And maybe another spacer. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Before we're excuse me. Before we're ready to close this up, we need to adjust the parking brake shoes. Because if they're too far away from the the drum inside here then you're gonna be pulling the e-brake handle like way up and it's not gonna do anything. So we need to spin this little access port down toward the bottom. And then at the bottom, um, there's a little adjuster between the two brake shoes and you adjust that. Uh, when you adjust that, it extends and pushes the brake shoes out and so that's gonna put them closer to the drum and that'll eliminate the slack in your e-brake handle. Well, there's like a little gear in there and that's what you need to put the screwdriver in there and turn. All right, that's about right. You want a little bit of resistance when you try to turn the, the hub, but you don't want it to be completely locked. So that should be good right there. Now, since we put a 25 mil spacer on the front, I think it's gonna look weird if we don't put a spacer in the rear, but also the only spacers I have left are 
some 37 mil spacers. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I know we're short of lugnut. I'll figure it out later. <laughs> That may or may not rub. I'll <laughs> we'll have to see. I'm gonna have to raise it up a little bit. All right, so the only thing left to do is check if the parking brake actually works. Actually still need to pull it kind of high, but I think that's because the handle needs to be adjusted too. There's a little 10 mil nut on the handle if you take the cover off. That'll also let you adjust the throw, I guess. So I think we're gonna do that right now because we're already here. All right, so to get the cover off the parking brake, you just kinda gotta kinda suggestively wiggle it around back and forth and pull that way. Yeah, so it's, this is the 10 millimeter that I was talking about. So th this is the end of the cable that runs to the bracket that we attached our new parking brake cables to. And as you can see, it's pretty much right at the end. So this doesn't need to be tightened a bit. Yeah, that's much better. So I put the cover back on. That's much better. All right, so now it should work right. So off, rolls pretty easy. Yep, awesome. Okay, that's gonna be it. I'm tired. See you guys next time. Good night. Buenas noches. Oyasumi. Dekira katta hito wa chanto fukushu suru yo ni ne.